Here's another Model T little conversation. You know, this doesn't happen all in a day. This is a project that's ongoing, so I'm just bringing you the updates as they come. Some of them are bigger than others. Here's a little update with Ed on the Model T. Okay, Ed, you gave me a call and you told me there's something a little bit unique. A little bit unusual. You see, you don't know, find a shop sometimes, and I this is uh, I'm not that familiar with it either. Okay. As far as uh, uh, ability to take something apart and put it back together again. I hope I can get it back together again. Yeah. It's a Model T Motors and some of the early stuff on them. Okay. Uh, I think when I was a kid, I had my uncle's 1922 coupe and I uh, drove it to high school a little bit and I remember we had it all painted up and, and I went to high school in Edgerton High, high School and I was in the FFA so we took the Model T forward and pulled the FA, FFA float okay. and maybe the Bicentennial Parade or some mm -hmm. local parades or something like that. And other than that, we I was, had a few years, I don't know what happened, we sold it someplace. Yeah. But it was my uncle's 22 Model T. Okay. So I knew a little bit about it then and I was probably at that time 15 or 16 years old, something like that. Okay. So then uh, um, I got a friend over here that uh, has a few of these Model Ts and was kind of interested and we took on this project that we had a little bit of a video before when we this uh, motor over here where we'd stroked it yep. and put a stroke in it now he brought the original motor in on the car okay and i said well let me tear it apart and so and we'll clean it up and make sure it's okay so this is some of the things on okay it. it's really unusual and then even those days uh the first model t's that would buy the guy would buy a car so no electronics Oh, no, yeah. no, I don't want to. I'll crank it myself. No electric starter. No, no electric starter. So the few years they didn't have starters. Right. There was no place for the starter. And a couple of years later, maybe in the, in the 17 or 18s, uh, they put a cast in a place for the starter. Right. So you can get an option starter, and it would be a six volt starter then, and and then uh, and also the crank too. So then you could finally get a, a little better lighting system and. Yeah. And the first ones only had two headlights and one tail light, but no stoplight. In those days, there was nobody behind you anyways. <laughs> and somebody in a horse and buggy or something. Right, it right. Indicated that right. you were going to stop the car. <laughs> but with, look at today, look how much electronics we got in the car. Yeah. We can't even get in the car. With, like, they won't even let us in the door without unlocking the thing with this yeah, limb right. bobber or whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> that's right. And then, you're driving down the road, and security can shut your car off with all this electronic GPS and stuff. Yeah, that's right. And here's some of the things about this. Okay. Their whole electric system was this uh, magnetic force here. And Did you say magnetic? Magnetic. These were coils, and they're wound coils with okay. uh, like, like, uh, a sealer on, like a wax sealer on them, okay. and then one strap hooks them all together. It has one terminal up here, so all this electricity, and this was opposite this fan here. Okay. These are magnets. Really? They're electronic, they're like magnetic right now. Okay. And this is on the flywheel. Wait a see, minute. We're looking ring. at the flywheel. It's on the flywheel, and see the starter goes on here too. Wow, okay. Well, okay. I'm getting an education here. So then this is shimmed up really close with some shims so that just misses maybe a 10 or 15 thousandths. And it was close enough to make a magnificent. And this thing created all the voltage to run the coils and spark plugs. Really? And, and the two headlights and one tail light. So this generated all the electricity this is the for generator. the car? Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, yes. I've never seen this before. It's quite heavy. It's just cast and then this is insulated so it still becomes a magnet. Yeah. It has aluminum spools underneath here to keep it so it is mag magnetic. And then on the back side of this is the transmission. You got, it's got some kidding. planetary gears and a small gear down in here. So, so the transmission was integrated with the flywheel and, yes. and the generator. Yeah, no clutch. Because when you started it up, it didn't go anywhere until you pushed one of the three pedals down. And all you did then 
which clamp a band the same as you would on today's cars on putting the brake on. Really? So here's the bands, the, each one, three bands. Okay. One okay, was, that's why there's three segments here. Yeah. Okay. So if you pinch one of them, it'd go back, the car backed up. Wow, okay. And I've the, never driven one with the three pedals. I never yeah, knew what, yeah. how they worked. So then you push the other one, yeah. and the car is in low gear. Okay. And then you get going real fast, and you let up on the gas a little bit, and push the other pedal down, yeah. and the handbrake, the emergency brake, push that forward, and it went into high gear. Really? So it was actually an automatic transmission. Today's eight-speed, ten-speed cars, Yeah. the brand new 2025, has got bands similar to this that acts the same way. You squeeze them and it shifts. And that's what's going on in a modern transmission, exactly. and they were doing this a hundred years ago. Yes, exactly right. Well, then this, and the motor oil, and the big tank for the oil pan, yep. motor oil, and Transmission oil is all the same. It's 30 weight motor oil. So because this runs in the oil, it throws oil everywhere inside the engine. So that lubricates the pistons, the rods, the camshaft, everything in the whole motor. Wow. And so one big splash looks like a dishwasher throwing. <laughs> so, but in including this generator in section. Yes, all in oil. Wow, okay. Splashing oil everywhere. Of course it leaked. Out the cracks I want, of course it did. Right. So anyways, then there was some aftermarket stuff you could buy. Okay. This happens to be a little scooper here. If you could buy this, people make it a little trough. And this goes in the back of the motor, it splashes, and it runs up to the front of the motor and actually oils the timing gears in oh. front of the, the motor. Okay, so a little would, extra oil. It would splash into that yeah, and into roll down the trough, tube into okay. Go down your tube. That's because the motor in the car was a little bit of an angle. And you went uphill. Yeah. If you went uphill, then you wouldn't get any oil in the from the camshaft gears. Okay. A little bit hard on them. Okay. Yeah. So an so aftermarket was, company came up with this. Yes. Somebody come up later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of pretty good. And then uh, then we have some adapters. There's some adapters here that these are aftermarkets, but we can put a distributor on them now. Oh. And we might even put a Volkswagen distributor on it. But oh, that's how you did it. I know you yeah. mentioned that that's a possibility, but yeah. it's with one of those adapters. Yeah, with a gear on the special gear, in front you put a Volkswagen, then you can run 12 volt system. Okay. With today's lights and stuff in it. Yeah. A new starter, 12 volts, fires right up and runs it. It makes it a little better vehicle than yeah. have to crank it by hand. Right. Like the old man demanded. <laughs> right. He knew he was strong enough to start the car. Right. He didn't need no starter. <laughs> so some of those is kind of interesting. No, that's very, and sometimes very interesting. People, uh, of course, the younger, younger people, younger than I am, never seen anything like this. and and didn't have any idea how they started, but actually it's almost the same as today's cars. It's fascinating how many of these principles are living on today, yes, we just don't are. realize it. Yeah, they are. Even our friends down at Hughes Transmission, Yes. well they uh, build transmissions too, and I think maybe they'll teach, learn something from what I just told them. Yes, oh okay. <laughs> maybe, I doubt it, but I think they're a little bit more educated and. And then, um, we're gonna have to see if we can something like this. We'll see if we can hop this up and make a high performance transmission out of it somehow. Maybe okay. a drag racing transmission. Yeah, right? it could be. Yeah, like they make. All right. <laughs> right on. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Have a good day.